<laughs> there are so many benefits to your mental health, to your well-being as a person by allowing yourself to explore your creativity, right? Or they're all going to be talking behind my back. They're talking behind your back anyway sometimes, so who cares? Well, hello there. So now we're going to finish off this whole topic about creativity. And I thought this is a perfect time to kind of talk about barriers to creativity and unblocking. So one of the first barriers that you could run into with creativity is telling yourself that you're not creative. Now, the reality is pretty much everybody is. We have a different way that we create, perhaps, uh, but in reality, we all have something that we do that's creative. Now, maybe it's not an artistic form, so it maybe not be music or um, art or performance or dance or any of those kinds of things. It could be how you throw a party. It could be how you create your garden, how you design your yard, how you paint your house, um, you know, how you cook, um, how you create spreadsheets for your you know, company and um, contribute to ways or throw ideas as to, you know, marketing ideas or all kinds of things. We all have something in us that allows us that's, that, that is a creative outlet for sure. So getting rid of that idea that you're not creative, um, it's just what are you creative at? What do you enjoy doing? So that's one of the first barriers. So, um, if you are a creative or you are someone who um, is artistic or does all those kinds of things, one of the barriers you could run into is, well, there's no point in doing it because I can't make a living at it. So why bother? Um, yeah, no. <laughs> there are so many benefits to your mental health to your well-being as a person by allowing yourself to explore your creativity, even if it's just a hobby. Um, if you do, you know, decide to do it more of, you know, as a living, then of course those things, you're going to learn those things along the way. And there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to have to learn to be able to do that. Um, so those are important. So don't stop yourself from doing it just because you think, well, I can't make a living at that anyway, so why put some effort into it? Um, you know, pulling yourself away from, um, you know, a, you know, a television and, you know, the things that we get stuck in. I love, you know, Netflix and I love all those things too. I, I you know, they, they're their own sort of creativity and tell us stories. Um, but finding ways that you can express your own creativity is a really important thing for, um, really for your well-being. I think that, I think it's really, really important and we can forget, you know, forget about that. So let's kind of go back to the four weeks that we um, talked about previous and kind of look at the barriers and um, unblocking, you know, what's a barrier in that area and what's a way to unblock it. So let's kind of talk about that. So we, first of all, we talked about courage. Um, so the barriers are pretty simple, right? There's fear, there's judgment. You know, we know trying to get the courage to do something new, there's a lot of things around that. I recently sat in on a, a little sort of workshop with um, this woman, Jen Loudon, um, L-O-U-D-E-N. She's worth checking out. She's an author, um, but she does some really cool creative um, things. And she talked about the psychology of creativity and how in reality, um, pushing ourselves to be creative is actually your mind processes it as a fearful thing because it says it, there's a risk involved. And our brains are designed to keep us away from risk because the in the risk, there's a level of unsafetiness, right? Not of being unsafe. Unsafetiness. Hmm, cool word. Anyways, I make things up sometimes. <laughs> so your mind actually goes into this place of, of um, protecting you stopping you, um, doing things like, you know, making you procrastinate, giving you ideas as to why you shouldn't create something, um, because it's actually, it feels like it's protecting you. It's like it's life-threatening. 
but it's not. So how do you get your brain to kind of reset and relax in that way? Well, a lot of soothing sort of self-talk is a way to do that, right? So um, really kind of saying, I know, you know, almost talk to yourself like you're another person, right? So you, you talk to that fearful part of your brain to be able to say, I know this seems scary, but I trust me, it's not. We're just going to play. We're just going to have some fun. This is why I want to do it. I want to explore this because it, it's going to be fun and it's going to feel good and we're going to enjoy it. I'm not going to do anything that's going to put you at risk and kind of talk like that. Um, you know, if your mind is really wild on it, you know, and it's going, um, yeah, but you know, and it's really fighting you on this particular thing and no, you're, you're all wrong, you know, cause it can, right. Um, so play it out in your mind, keep going to what's the worst case scenario that could happen. So like, um, if I do this, you know, people are going to laugh at me or, People are going to make fun of me. Um, you know, can I live with that? Have I been made fun of before? So it's literally like taking it step by step and breaking it down and going to the furthest thing. Nobody will want me. We're fear. We're afraid of being abandoned. We're afraid of being pushed out of community. We're afraid of um, nobody's going to like us. You know, that kind of an idea. But play those scenarios out in your head as if they went to the worst case. Like you just absolutely you know, uh, I'm abandoned and nobody wants to spend any time with me because, you know, I put this painting out and it was awful or whatever, right? Or they're all going to be talking behind my back. They're talking behind your back anyway sometimes. So who cares? You have no control over what other people say or think. All you have control over is, you know, how you are and how you show up in the world. And that's really kind of, you know, the way you have to do things, right? So um, you know, talk yourself into, you know, once we discover the benefits of it. So when you start to explore and you have some fun and you have some positive um, reinforcement, like just from, it doesn't even have to be positive input from someone else. It can literally be that felt fun. That felt good. That felt relaxing. I enjoyed that. Um, you know, I did that painting um, and it really sucked really was bad. And now I'm going to try again. Um, I wrote that song and oh my God, and I played it back on the recorder and it sounds terrible. And, um, but I'm going to try again. I'm going to try something kind of fun. Laugh at it, you know, have some fun and enjoy with it. Right. So that's moving through the courage part of it. We talked about safe space. So, you know, having, I said, sometimes it's hard to find in communities, it's hard to find safe space. So you have to be that, you know, for yourself, it can feel isolating. Um, artistic endeavors can feel very isolating, but there's also joy in that, right? So creating a safe space where it's, this is my little cocoon where I get to go. This is my little creative corner. I don't even have to show anybody it if I don't want to, you know, I don't have to even go to that place. I can just create this safe space where I can go ahead and do that, you know, do something, whatever it's going to be, um, you know, find other people maybe to talk about it with, you know, find other people that are interested in doing the same thing. That's why sometimes maybe taking a little course in it or whatever, other people that have, have that same interest in you can be a safe space. Um, I recently was involved with, um, you know, a couple of women who, you know, we got together um, every couple of weeks and just talked about our creativity and how we felt blocked and you know, what that did was it got us talking and got us talking about those fears and the frustrations and the self-judgment about those kinds of things and make it normalizing it, right? So you're not the only one. And then when we, you know, then as we, we would do fun things and just go, let's buy next time, let's do this. And it was just, it would just be spontaneous and fun and stupid. That exercise actually created something really fun, which I'm going to be sharing with you down the road. Um, but it, you know, so having, uh, you know, other people that you can talk about those kinds of the with, you know, finding this teeny tiny community, you know, just this little space to be able to do it. The next thing that we talked about was perfectionism. So while well, we know what the barrier to that is, um, it's, you know, you, you, 
compare yourself, you know, and you, you judge it. You like, oh my God, I don't want, you know, I have to do it perfectly. I have to do. Why do we do that to ourselves? You know, don't compare yourself to someone else. Do not do that. Um, you know, how to unblock from that is just basically, you know, first of all, really talk about, uh, talk to, again, that, you know, self-soothing talk to be able to say, it really doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. If I don't get this completely perfect, if I just try, you know, sometimes rather than trying to create, like, I'm going to create this big project, you know, doing something small and giving yourself a really super, super short amount of time to just do the best you can and then literally let it go. Um, when we talked about the songwriter studio, that's what it was. It was a short time that we had only that time to do it. And then we had to let it go. We had to move on. So um, it gives you a way, it gives you an end. When we do the acoustic guitar project, people love it because um, it's like a one time thing where um, you get one week to take the guitar and write a song, record it, you know, just no embellishments, no nothing, and put it out there. And there's something about doing that that um, breaks you through that perfectionism barrier because you have a time frame. You can't, you can't go beyond it. And you can't go back and fix it because you already had to put it out. So doing those kinds of things is a really good thing. Spontaneity, um, you know, the barrier to that is, ugh, we want to be in control of everything. We want to know what the outcome is going to be. We want to know. We want to plan it. We want to get this. But practice. Do some things to practice getting out of that habit. Um, being able to say, what if I didn't plan my day? Or what if I didn't plan this, what I was going to do? I just said, I'm going to pick up this you know, pen, or I'm going to pick up this guitar, I'm going to pick up, um, I'm going to pick up my keyboard, and I'm just going to write, I'm going to pretend I'm writing a short story for school, or I'm going to pretend that I'm, you know, I, I, like something, just anything, I'm, you know, painting, or I'm going to dance, and I'm going to just be spontaneous, and stupid and wild and don't put yourself in front of the mirror and just let your body move you know movement can be really really great to get yourself unblocked from things so I'm going to talk about something really super interesting because Jen Loudon um, again um, you know it was a really interesting thing because she really gets into not only you know she's been doing this for a very long time and helping people with creative uh with creativity and unblocking them but she also you know really looks at it from a psychological standpoint as well and really talks about those connections and one of the things i thought was really super interesting and i i think i would have to agree with her on this is they've discovered that you know um, the use of positive fantasies. Um, so this is going to go against the idea of creative visualization, which a lot of people use for all kinds of different things. But positive fantasies make our brain think that we have already done it. And then we relax and we have no energy to actually take the action to do the project. I have fallen prey to that many times. I have gotten super excited about a project and an idea that I had and I've just talked about it and talked about it and just like oh my god this is this really great thing and I'm so excited about it and I I have there's a thing called street people's wedding and it was a whole project and I was so excited I literally had the vision of the entire thing I knew exactly how I wanted to put it together and all I wanted to do and I talked about it and told a whole bunch of people and I never did it. And I honestly think that that's one of the reasons is that that positive fantasy by talking about it and getting all that excitement out and um, expressing it in that way, suddenly I had no energy or any desire. I had already, my brain was already satisfied with it. So it may mean maybe don't talk about it so much. Maybe pull it back and keep it a little bit quiet. That's kind of why right now I'm not really talking about all the specifics as to what I'm going to do on my YouTube channel. I'm being pretty vague about it and I'm working behind the scenes and, you know, I'm walking through all kinds of different barriers and unblocking myself, which is really super interesting. Um, taking physical action and doing something 
in to move that project forward is uh, what you want to do. And, you know, another thing that she, that Jen used, and I loved this idea was, uh, and it worked so well, can't even tell you how well, um, pick one project, not a forever project, a for now project. This is the project I'm going to focus on right now and create teeny tiny containers of time to do the project and limit yourself to only allowing yourself to do it for that teeny tiny container. Fill that space and then go on and do something else. Make a commitment to do it, whether it's like, I'm gonna do 10 minutes a day, I'm gonna do 15 minutes a day. And it's really, really interesting um, because it, it's something that all of a sudden you, um, you start to want to. You're, you know, if you were procrastinating at all or doing anything, it's like you really start to want to and you wanna get some momentum going and you get way further than you think on the project. So there's one little tip that I can give you. So we talked about, we've talked about in this thing really quickly, all about barriers and unblocking. But if there's one little tip I could say is two little tips. Well, it's one combined. Pick one project for right now and create teeny tiny containers to do that project in. Go for it and post on here. Tell me what you're creating. Tell me about um, what you're going to do and uh, how you've discovered that you do have creativity, even if you didn't think you did. And uh, please, I'd love to hear from you. And we're going to be moving on to another topic in April. And um, I have no idea what that's going to be yet, but we will uh, we will get there. And I'm excited. I'll be excited to share with you what we're talking about there. So um if you haven't yet, subscribe, um, hit the bell to be able to get notifications that um, I'm posting something. There is going to be some cool things coming up. As I say, I'm working behind the scenes and uh, I'd love to share with you. So, um, and share with your friends. If you've got friends who are creative and you know would really benefit um, from these ideas and these little pointers from this, um, this thing about barriers and unblocking your creativity, um, pass it on. So see you next week.